Unicorns, and I really want to see how they can play now against Unicorns of Love and if that early game is improved or not. I completely agree with you there. I think the Unicorns are definitely a large question mark here. Rocket is much more consistent in what they do. They do yeah. have these long games. They do hold out and last if they can. And they never seem to lose decisively. It's always yeah. by just a little. And always a lot of focus again on Division. We, we just heard from the analyst desk how Vander is the support who wards the most in the EU LCS. And it's just been the go-to thing for Rocket. And what we actually have seen from them is they, they're starting to play more aggressive with the warding as well. And I expect to see the same against Unicorns. Yeah, I think that is definitely going to be the oh, case. Nidalee. Vance went quick here. Yeah. And yeah, the Nidalee gets picked up almost immediately. That one gets locked in for Kickus. But of course, those bands, the Zed, the Lissandra, Kassin, a lot of mid-focus there. And on Rocket's side, they take out the Jarvan, the Nar, and the Ari. And Rocket looking at what they want to pick up here in answer. The Nidalee, a bit surprised it made it through, but still. Yeah, actually been banned in every other game we had today. Still considered here in Europe. It's one of the top junglers, not the top jungler, simply because of your early game burst damage. And obviously we have seen Jankos played last week. He won't get his hands on it this time because Kikis wants his second go on the Nidalee for himself. So I'm expecting to see some early aggression now coming out of Unicorns just from this Nidalee. And obviously because they are who they are. It definitely seems to be the way to define them. Have that on switch. They did find a bit of a pause though. Yeah. And in that win over Fnatic, it was... Definitely stupendous to see. Let's see if they can fill out this very early aggressive comp against Rocket or if they'll do something different. Yeah, we see Rocket do the same thing Fnatic did in the last game where you blind pick Zerif in the very first rotation. Nuke Dog feeling very confident clearly here. Feveron had a good showing. It worked for Fnatic, but there is still quite a lot of counter picks, so at least fairly strong picks into a Zerif. Keep in mind, he's a very immobile champion. He's very one-dimensional dimensional in what he's doing, so you can pick around it. And that's what they're doing with this Maokai lock-in here, because he can always dive onto Zerif in a team fight, and he has that 20% magic damage reduction, obviously, to help out his team as well. Really surprised that the... Uh, of course, the Rek'Sai did make it through for a little bit. It was through the, the ban phase, and as I was going to say, they spent so much, the Unicorns did, on these mid and top flex picks that they neglected something like that. It does go through. Yankos is going to be able to pick it up. And now Woolite is eye eyeballing a okay. hyper carry, and he does. He goes for the Kog'Ma. Yeah, so very late game focused combo already coming in from Rocket, but actually still a fairly good power spike curve. They have in because you're building Trinity Force normally, and then obviously Morel Normicon coming in from Azeroth. So you actually have a fairly good mid game as well where you can group up and you can start teaching down a tower. Not as effective as a Corky. Corky's Aerof Pump like we saw Fnatic use, but still very, very strong. And obviously the late game now, two very, very hard scaling champions from Rocket. But it's not like the Unicorns with their first few picks are looking weak either. Caitlyn, one of the hyper carries we do have. Maokai, fantastic tank in the late game. Only problem is that Nidalee, she doesn't offer too much in a late game fight. Not particularly, and it does seem like it's a bit of the way the Lee Sin used to be picked up as yeah. sort of a bridge in some cases, except for this is more snowballing off those ganks. And you see the last lock-ins for Unicorns. They do pick up the Morgana, and they take Damn. the Cassiopeia. We are going late game. That, yes, we are. Both teams really, really having some strong comps here. Obviously, the Rek'Sai will outskill in Nidalee in terms of the fights. But there's also a lot of early game gank pressure, too. And once you hit six, yes. it becomes really, really irritating. So. I feel like it's on the junglers. You know, Yankos, it's called the First Blood King for a reason. True. We have to remember, however, that Rek'Sai has lo lost quite a lot of damage in the early game. 5.1, 5.2, some nerfs to her. And that simply means in a straight up one-on-one, -on -one, as long as Kikis get the first, gets like the jump onto Yankos, then he's actually going to be stronger. And that's something Unicorns can use with these fairly strong lanes, especially the mid and the bottom lane with the Caitlyn and the Cassiopeia push those waves in, play very aggressive there, and therefore allow Yankos, oh sorry, Kikis now, to invade into the enemy jungle, look for these one-on-one -on -one fights with Yankos. And there is the Scion lock-in as well. So okay. Rocket gives themselves some serious tank. We get to see a little bit more variety this time, and I'm actually really excited to see how Power of Evil does on this Cassiopeia. It's yeah. actually been banned against this team in half the game so far. And because it makes it through, he goes a little bit different. I, I still think it's going to help his playstyle because he does make not very mobile champions look pretty mobile. The very way he true. Plays. Very true. He's very good at his positioning in fights and in the laning phase. But again, both teams here 
Some very, very strong late game team fights we're gonna look at. We have the two tanks. Obviously, I will still say the Maokai in a late game fight. I'll take him over a Sion any day. But Sion's mid game because he doesn't need to go Rod of Ages. He's just gonna go straight tank, nothing else. He gets a very, very early, early tank power spike, if we can call it that, where he becomes extremely hard to deal with. And that's why again, Rocket, because you actually have some decent mid game through Nuke Dog and Woolite, Trinity Force, Morel, Normicon coming in. Can actually group there and look for fights while the Caitlyn is really weak and needs more time to scale up. Cassiopeia as well, wanna stack up that poison. So the mid game here is where Rocket can try and make some plays to get that lead and get your carries into late game first and then win the team fights before Unicorns get up there as well. Yeah, I think they've definitely picked a comp that they're going to be able to do that with. The question is, can they execute? Can they deal with the chaos that the Unicorns create? Now, you've seen those lineups. What is, let us know what your predictions are. Go ahead and tweet us at LOL Esports using the hashtag UOLWIN or ROCWIN. We'll check on those results in the game. But this is going to be a crazy one. How could it not be the Unicorns of Love are going to be taking on Team Rocket? The banners are lit, the chants are up, and we're onto the rift. And two teams here trying to get into the top three in Europe. They all, both of them want to be up there with obviously elements, Fnatic and SK Gaming. Just haven't really shown the consistency yet for Unicorns, and we've just seen Rocket with a very hard schedule, Welcome but also playing way too ring. passive, falling behind in the early game. So clear weaknesses for both teams that can be exploited. Well, it will really come down to how those two teams do execute. And yes, I think Rockad are a bit more consistent, but they do have their set, their own set of issues. The real question is, where do these junglers go? Where do they make their early plays? We've seen a lot in Italy's so far since it's yeah. been picked up more and more. Kikis didn't have an incredibly impressive game on it, but there's score. still the potential there to do something really, really crazy in the early game, start snowballing kills. And if they can do that, I'm really worried for Rockad. Yeah, I agree for sure here. Then Italy is going to help Unicorns of Love get into this late game stage for themselves. But it's fun because the two junglers we have in this game is widely considered here in Europe as the two best junglers. Or at least they're with the likes of a Javan. And they both offer map control. Nidalee offers map control through her strong one-on-one -on -one potential so she can invade into your jungle, find your jungler and fight him and kill him. Place a few wards and that way she's going to be able to control it. While Rek'Sai, of course, with her ulti, is able to jump from one lane to another, her strong early ganks as well. So you have two junglers here who can really impact early on. And obviously Kikis and Jankos has been two of the better junglers here in Europe. Jankos widely considered, if not the best, then at least top two together with Svenska. Uh-oh, starting off early. Vander is going to eat a binding followed by the Peacemaker. That'll teach him to be checking too close to the brush. And everything else looks like it's going to be a pretty standard start as well as Visit Chachi making his way up to the top lane. And you touched on a really interesting point. I feel like not just Yankos, but all of Rocket have a lot of respect of the rest of the teams in the European LCS, despite the fact that they started one and three. They're very, eh, there's Overpow doing that Scion. They started at one and three, yeah. They had, they had a really rough schedule and they bounced back pretty well. Now they're at three and three, but Every time I talk to another team in the European LCS, they're always great in scrims. Yeah, they're exactly. really terrible, ter or terrifying to play against. And they don't have the worst record in the world right now. But I want to see how they go forward in this one because it seems like they've definitely found a stride. Yeah, again, we know the late game is good. We know the team fighting is great. They place a lot of wars as well as a team, but they just play too safe simply in the early game. But still, I want to give them the credit from last week. Because we saw the same move from Rocket in both the games, where as soon as they had the chance, they would actually rotate the AD carry to the top lane, take down the tower, and then with him and Vander, they would walk down to the enemy jungle, place a few deep boards, and this again we're talking 12-13 minutes, and kind of be more aggressive in the way they were playing. But this lane here, obviously remember when you pick a Caitlyn, you want to win your lane in place. That's where you are very, very strong. And that's why we see Unicorns also aiming for this 2-2, two Set up trying really to poke out Woolite and make sure he can get the fun And this is the map control we talk about with Nidalee. She can go into the enemy jungle. Notice how the bottom lane is pushing up for Unicorns and he's finding Yankos. Yep, does land the spear and he just goes ahead and steals the Gromp away. So Kikis will grab a little something for his trouble. Should set Yankos back for just a moment. Try to keep tabs on where that jungler will be at all times. A little bit difficult when yeah. dealing with the Void Monster, but he's doing a good job so far. 
Doing a very, very good job here from Kikis, and it's what we mentioned with the two lanes, as long as you can control the mid and the bottom lane, you open up for him to walk in there and know he can get assistance from his teammates. Therefore, gets a grump for himself and a level advantage on the Angus Mule. Summon as well as fourth is Chachi, trading with Overpower in a bit of a wet noodle fight up here between two super tanks. Remember, Cyan can go straight tank. Where are we going to see the Rod of Ages coming in from the Maokai? So he needs a little bit more time to scale up, but you do then have your ulti with the 20% damage reduction. I don't think I've ever seen a tree do that much damage to a Lumberjack, but he's got to have to be a little bit careful. He's got that flask to heal up a little bit. Meanwhile, Bardax having to pop potion of his own. And he's been able to trade out with Woolite here, but the problem is that late game, yes, Caitlyn is going to be fantastic. Of course, she should win the lane, but should they ever fall behind, this is when a Kog'Maw is going to start shining quite a lot. And they have some pick potential. They wandered too close. Vander has been letting those hooks fly. Yeah. So the problem is, again, this Morgana coming in with their Black Shield making it nearly impossible for Vander to set up any place. You can actually block the Black Shield fairly easily as a Thresh. Get a few ranks in either. Typically, we see in the flay, you can use that to proc the black shield and then still connect. And obviously, if you land the hook, while you won't snare the target, you can still follow up on it and actually jump onto him and maybe switch over to the Caitlyn. So there are ways to play around it for Vander. But it's becoming very hard, especially because they're losing the one-on-one -on -one AD carry trade. Yeah, while we're on the subject of those AD carry trades, you know, these two bot lanes, are definitely a little bit night and day in a few of their numbers. In particular, I want to focus on Vardegs and Hillisang because they actually have the most deaths in the entirety of the European LCS in terms of their role. So that bot lane collectively got 49 deaths. I mean, they've definitely had a hard time. Admittedly, they've gotten in some really crazy fights and really crazy situations, but you got to think that this is almost like a guaranteed safety lane for them. And I wonder how much that particular stat line's really you know, made that yeah. Into their mind. I mean, we very often see Hillisang being the guy that sacrifices himself for the team. He's engaging and he's played Leona four times and always going in first. So that's obviously why he's been racking up so many deaths here while Vardax, on the other hand, it basically comes from the, fa from the fact that when Unicorns are losing, they're getting destroyed. Like, that's it. They just get stomped in their games and end up dying so much. But again, look at Kikis. Already placed a few d bots in the jungle. He keeps walking around looking for Yankers. Yankers won't be able to do anything to him. And he can use this to say, okay, Crooks were alive. So I know Yankers hasn't been here for a while. So I'm going to consider that either he's back in base or he's on the bottom side of the map because he didn't see him on any of the wards. Use that information always to make sure you know where the jungler is and you don't go too aggressive when he could be nearby. Yeah, just trying to find any moment he can get in and attack Yankos, but, you know, settling for a little bit of counter-jungling isn't the worst thing in the world either. The problem is, you know, you mentioned it, Nidalee's got that ticking timer of usefulness, so Kikis is going to have to find an in here. So far, he hasn't really impacted the lanes too much. We'll see where he decides to go next. Yeah, putting all his focus on counter-jungling, not ganking, and there we see the rank 2 hook from Vander, instantly removing the black shield from Hillisang, and then you can follow up with a play as your way of actually engaging, but you don't really have that all-in potential. Will Light is just going to sit back and try and farm from Rocket's side. It's done quite well in a, a, a lane that is a little bit rough for the Kog'Ma. I guess there's probably quite a lot of those, but he's kept up reasonably well in farm. He was pushed back. Yes, he's down about 9, 10 farm right now, but they've been playing it incredibly safe, and not a moment too soon they place that ward down. Here comes Kick. It's going to get spotted. The Flash, the... Nothing is going to connect, actually. You saw some spears and dark bindings, but they all just threaded the needle as Woolite was able to grab a lantern out to safety. And right back to the farm game. Right back to the farm game. Yeah, Hillisang tried to surprise with flash binding. Not exactly the easy thing to hit. And in the end, the Vander. Oh, he's able to hit one point Whoa, blank, Woolite. Though. Yeah, and now Vardax is here. Woolite can burn his well. flash. He's going to go low. And that's first blood. Hillisang trying to answer back with the kill. Ignite! is just going to do it. Vander picks up the answer. Now visit Chachi dealing with Overpow and Yankos, but he is a very tanky tree, and he's trying to walk it on back home. Meanwhile, in the mid, suddenly the switch is flipped. It's turned on. Nuke Duck flashes. That's another, power of evil. That's another kill. He's able to go on forward with the flash and make the play. All said and done around the map. Two and one. Remember, again, points. this was the first rotation. Zerif, blind pick coming in from Rocket. Worked February in the last game. 
now a one-on-one -on -one kill for Power of Evil. And down the bottom lane, we saw the binding into a trap. The old Kate lane, Morgana lane. In the end, they trade one for one. But there was a kill for Vardax, where it was a kill for Vanda on the side of Rocket. Yeah, and Gillisang was the one that did get killed. Vardax got that one back up. And of course, they pick up the dragon after all of that. The unicorns, say what else you want about them. They certainly know how to take advantage of a situation. And they managed to grab themselves a nice little edge there. Look at Power of Evil here. Normally we just see Tear as your first item on a Cassiopeia, and then you can go into like a Rhyalize maybe as your second item. He's actually building towards a Rod of Ages as well. So with this early kill and the free farm he's had in lane, he's feeling like he can actually get that Rod of Ages early enough to make it stack up in time and be useful. And then obviously have the tier as well, which is going to be fully stacked around for him, probably 22 minute point in this game, as long as he can stay in the lane and farm. So really going to look towards two early scaling items. And it can pay off for him because he gets them this early on with that first, oh, with the one kill in lane. Yeah, I think as you mentioned before, it's all going to come down to if they're going to be able to take advantage in the mid game, Rockat that is. Right now, they're definitely keeping pace, but you can't afford to give up too many picks like that, especially against the team that typically had been having some trouble in the laning phase. Now, I mean, it's, it's not entirely fair because it is a Caitlyn Morgana lane, but Will I, he cannot afford to eat another point blank uh, binding like that because Vardex is just going to start shredding through his health. Yeah, that's for sure here. He just needs to stay back and farm. Yanko's moving here to try to set up a lane gang. He's got the no skirmishers flash, on yeah. too. No flash for Hillisang. It's going to be all about that black shield. It is down for now, so Vanna can go the for hook. it. There it is. He's going to flay backwards. Hillisang looks to be the target in sights. They zoom right on in. Yankos is going to pick him up, but he's got to walk it out. Here TP comes the well. teleport from Vizichachi. Yankos, Vander, Woolite, can they escape? Woolite is just too slow, and just like that, a spear, a shot, an ace in the hole. And Unicorns of Love pick up another kill. Getting a kill here. Again, they're trading one for one, these two teams. Vizichachi. Had to use the teleport, it was already down from overpower, so he wasn't able to join. Should be a tower as well, you have the Nidalee heal onto a Kaden. That's a good combination we have seen a few times here in Europe, where you use that to simply fast push down towers to get the attack speed onto a Caitlyn with a long range, so you can stay safely back. And you very quickly get a few out of turrets and some global gold. Right, and the best part about that is they didn't have to give up the top turret. It looks like he's still trying to push on it. But Overpower just doesn't have the damage Nobody on saw the that. tank sign. And uh, yeah, I was, there we go. I was, I was, there we go. There we go. <laughs> he, he makes it up the second fine. time. He is fine. Hey, we've all been there, Deficio. Indeed we have. And it's worse if you flash into the wall. Yes, that does hurt. So Overpower's going to try to push this tower in finally. But again, it's so difficult when you don't have that much damage. He'll finally be able to chop it down. He sticks around a little bit long, but Vizichachi is still there. Here comes Hillisang around the side. He's going to start charging. Can they let? No. Way too fast, and he'll zoom his way back to his own tower. A lot of unicorns were looking to charge him down there, but you can't beat that sign when he goes running. Nope, once he pops his ulti, it's a hard man to lock down. Kick is again. Probably been spending more time in the jungle of Rocket than his own here. Keep counter jungling, and yes, yeah, skirmish is Saber actually for Yankos, so he's gonna aim for these late game team fights instead of their early ganking pressure and simply have the 20% damage reduction on either Vardex or Power of Evil when he's trying to dive in, because keep in mind, Unicorns is only going to run with Maokai's front line. If Rocket can then send in the Rek'Sai and the Scion, they can buy more time, the Unicorns can, for their carries to take down the Maokai and then start rolling over Unicorns. Yeah, that's definitely going to be the game plan for them, but for now, the Unicorns still maintain a nice 3,000 gold edge. And it's difficult for Yankos to really get involved in his own jungle here. All the outer turrets have been knocked down for Rockat. The Unicorns will be able to back spend a little bit of that gold they've acquired. And Yankos, you know, he's done decently well in this Nidalee. Not really an explosive power. And there you go. There's the Magi Soul Stealer again. You know, he got 20 stacks on it that last time, or the time before, rather. Yeah, so Yankos normally, obviously, when he's playing Italy, gets the Soul Stealer. Kick is stealing it now. Getting it for himself. Yeah. And he's adopting the build. <laughs> again, it's so hard to comment on that Soul Stealer because it's such a risky buy. But the Nidalee players like to do it because you need to snowball anyway to be effective in the late game fights. So why not have that Soul Stealer if you end up losing all the stacks on it or if you just go standard 
normal AP, you might not be as useful anyway. So oh. why, not, why not try and go for it? That looks like it hurt. And that's the first stack already here. Keep in mind, it is nearly gold efficient when you buy it. Get one or two stacks, and then you are good to go with that Soul Stealer on in Italy. And really, Unicorns looking to snowball. Looking to close out the options that Yankos does have in his own jungle. I have never seen so many Rek'Sai side tunnels cleared. And they're not really letting Rocket have a whole lot of breathing room in this one, but the 45 seconds. Oh, well, that, that is Drake's gonna have to. Yes, there we go. They land not quite everything, but it was enough to take him down. Kickus is going to take one shot from the tower and leaps away from the Akathian surprise. Tower's now on the menu, boys. Right after a healthy serving of Kogma. Really love the way Unicorns are using their lane dominance just to get more and more kills, not just sitting back and allowing Rocket to farm. Nope. We sit and hide in random bushes. We kill your AD carry when he's trying to farm actually around his own tower. And suddenly there's a Cassiopeia sitting, waiting for you. Keep pressuring this advantage. Deep bolts are in there. Towers will go down as well. Now though, Overpower is flying in. Yeah, he's gonna try to make something happen. They scatter away from Kickus, but they found Nuke Duck around the side and Power of Evil will be able to pick another. Kickus not quite going oh. down. Yes, he is the Prey Seeker. Nails him in the back, but there is going to be a fight right after that. Yanko's going very low. Visit Chachi, Power of Evil, coming up with another Pixel Rampage kill. His fourth of the game. Unicorns of Love, they're just simply beating Rocket to the punch here. Completely, and second time Nuke Duck here gets caught out first one on one in the lane, and now trying to come in and assist his team in a in a fight. But he walks through his own jungle, which is warded by unicorns, and they jump him instant. Let's see it again. So Oba jumping in, notice here Nuke Duck on the side. Well, you're on a ward, my friend, and unicorns are ready to collapse onto you. He's dead. Kickers will go down as well, but the fight is still won by the unicorns. Another kill onto Yankers, and they keep applying the pressure. Not allowing Rocket to do anything. The target prioritization from the Unicorns is really spectacular here because they find if the squishy targets, the immobile targets are just an inch out of position and they immediately collapse. And in, in mass too. Like I've just been really impressed with the way that they've been able to do that. Frost Queen's claim being used by Hillisang to try and push Nuke Duck and Overpow off this tower. <laughs> Keeping them safe for now. You have Archangel and a Rod of Ages already completed around the 16 minute mark. Oh, yeah. It's gonna stack up so fast for Power of Evil here. He's gonna be really, really strong in this game. And even Vardax, because he gets all these early kills, he got the towers, he got the farm. You're just gonna skip right past the weak Caitlyn mid game, get to your two item and three item spike. Where obviously Rocket now still only sitting on one completed core item for each member. Trinity Force is now completed by Woolite. This is the mid game that Rocket had to be ahead in, and unfortunately, they've really fallen quite far behind. 6,000 gold. We usually talk about how they're able to hold out quite well, but this game's starting to look a little more one sided. Yeah, and remember, it was Rocket who decided to do standard lanes. There was no swapping coming in, despite Sign also being one of the best top laners in a lane swap. They decided to go standard lanes. Lost every single lane, actually, in terms of farm. Kills even in bottom mid lane. And been losing the turrets ever since. Yeah, they just can't quite clear the wave away fast enough. However, the shield will be enough to keep it at full health. The unicorns, however, still roaming around in mass and dragging Rocket around the map. They're really dictating the pace of this game. And that's just fine by them, because the longer it goes, the bigger power of evil is going to get. And he's not the only one. Oh, uh, he's not the only one, that's for sure. The Maokai as well, going into the late game. Be a force to be reckoned with, obviously there is. Quite some tank damage on him from the likes of Blue Light. But the more time he spends on killing Lucy Chachi is the more time Power Weevil and Vardex is gonna spend on killing the rest of Rocket. Yeah, you can't really deal with that many threats at once, it seems. Rocket are attempting to save two sides of their base right now. But the Unicorns are stretching them a little bit thin around here. Many way of pushing in their favor on the bottom as well, so they'll have to yeah. deal with that eventually. Exactly, they are putting pressure here on three lanes at once, waiting for these minions to push up in the bottom lane, so Rocket has to send someone back and defend that one. Will take a lot of damage on their inhibitor turret while they're making sure they control the top side of the jungle where they're moving in between, getting a few hits on the tower every single time, and just forcing Rocket to stay back and try and wave clear. Really not giving them much of an opening. And that minion wave in the bottom starting to build really oh, big massive. here. Yep. Going to be a problem as it goes forward. 
Nikorn still taking everything out of the jungle away from Rocket. Yankos has not been able to really get in and do much of anything. He does have a better scoreline than Kikis, but that's not really going to mean much at this point in the game. 19 minutes in, they've caught Nukeduck on a binding. A hook comes in. Towers oh. in half health. They're just going to keep sieging it down. Woolite, though, he's got a bit of damage, but he's going to take an ace in the hole for his troubles as well. And Unicorns are still not deterred. No, they did take a lot of damage here, though. We did see the binding onto Nukeduck, followed by a spear. A little Peacemaker, but Rocket actually managed to hold off for now with the wave there. Nukeduck got to clear the bottom lane. And no tower going down for the Unicorns of Love. Just yet. Not quite yet. Close. They can do exactly the same again. They have nothing to be afraid of. Go straight in there, do the same. Slow push one wave with minions. Have Vigitachi push, push the other one and have four guys in the mid lane. Oh, Vivo. Yep. Forcing over power to all the He's again. done that so many times to try to get away. And it's, yes, it's worked. But when you have to spend your ults defensively, when you have to move back and maybe buy as many defensive items as possible, it's definitely not looking good. You're not controlling the pace of the game very well. And again, Rocket, it seems like they haven't just had their power spike delayed. They've almost entirely missed it here. Yeah, haven't been able to group up at all and use at least the Trinity Force on, on Woolite, but it's not the end of the world as long as you don't fall too far behind, which then will become the end of the world, and that's what we're seeing here from Rocket. 6,000 gold behind in 20 minutes, four towers. Another dragon should be picked up soon as well for the Unicorns, 2-0. to zero. But you didn't have to make plays if you were a Rocket. I mean, your legame is still strong as long as you just didn't fall behind and made sure Woolite could farm, and that's not been the case. He fell behind the lane, he's died three times already. And there's going to be a very delayed Blade of the Ring King coming in from him as well. And Unicorns can fight at any time they want to, especially because Power of Evil. I mean, look at that guy, he's going to be so strong. Yeah, he's definitely the most immediate threat on this team. And Rocket not entirely respecting that damage, especially not in the lane phase. Nuke Duck has had anything but an easy game for himself at 0-2. And, and there goes the Rek'Sai Scream, but just a little bit more farm here. Overpower going to duke it out with Visit Chachi. Here comes Yanko's actually a little more than he bargained for. Can't quite pick the pink ward. Phantom Dancer should be completed now for Vardak. Going for the maximum amount of team fight damage he can get. No static shift to fast push any ways for him. And now Last Whisper, once it comes in, he can actually deal with the Cyan fairly well. Because we have to remember, Cyan is a pick. Yes, he gets very tanky, but he has zero damage in a late game fight. And his CC is fairly unreliable as well, from ulti to his Q. A bit of a slow charge before you get the knock up from it. And that's one of his main problems, that if you don't actually do well in the mid game with Scion, you're just not oh. as strong oh. as the other tanks. Yeah, they really well trying to find Woolite, but there we go. Chachi's going in. They're going to try to force the fight. The spear is going to connect. They're able to get the damage out and visit Chachi picking up Nuke Duck Overpower now. Flashing low. There is the twisted advance and visit Chachi walking it on out. Hila saying a bit low. Visit Chachi completely fine and all that. One, two, pick up the kills. Go right back to pushing the turret. This and is Unicorns all over. Yeah, and it's funny again. Look at the minimap. It's all about Rocket in terms of warding in their own jungle. They play so many defensive wards, but this was just a random teleport coming in from Vizichachi to flank them, and then a fight around the mid lane itself, land the binding, land the snare from Vizichachi, and then suddenly you can just follow up with all your single target damage from the Cassiopeia and the Caitlyn. Yeah, it's really strange seeing so many wards on the Rocket side just not converted into anything. There is that third dragon picked up for them, and actually, it's funny you bring that up, too, because of these two supports, Vander's the one who wards far more, and Hillisang not so much. Let's take a look at how that play shaped up, despite the vision. Yeah, again, so Vizichachi gets a great engage with his teleport, and Uni uh, Rocket, sorry, are just so far behind that once Vizichachi gets onto either Nuke Dog or Woolite, then that target is going to die with so much single target damage coming out of Power Viva and Vardex. They're starting a Desperation Baron here. They don't have the damage really for it if the Unicorns do find out, but again, maybe it. that vision, there we go. That, the blue trinket goes down and they have to peel off as the Unicorns start heading towards the Baron pit. Rocket, bail away. Just had to go for it. I mean, there's nothing else on the map. Dragon was already gone. And had the Unicorns just walk straight up mid lane. They might free Baron there for Rocket, but now Unicorns are Unicorns taking over. There's a ward outside the Baron pit here, so Rocket can see that this is started. They don't have a stop moving down. Either. 
Not the Cashew Pia, however, with the blue bar. Ooh, now that she's shown up, yeah, that's a little bit tricky, though. A little bit damage taken by both teams. It's a tense moment as they both peel away from the Baron. Now it is Unicorns who are moving back up the middle, actually through the jungle of Rockat, who are in fast retreat. Yeah, if Unicorns want to start this uh, Baron again, then they have to do what they're doing right now. Clear out these pink wards, place your own wards deep in the jungle so you can see Rocket coming, and you need an Oracle Lens. Oracle's Lens here to clear all these wards from Rocket around this Baron, otherwise you won't be able to start it on the side of Hillosang. So they decide to back away from it, once again take over the jungle. This time the vision helps for sure. Yeah. There's still so many wards from Rocket, so they're going to see them started. Again, as soon as Vizichachi walks in here, there you go, you can see him walk into the Baron pit. And Rocket are reacting to it. Still a lot of damage from Unicorns. Yeah, I gotta admire the tenacity that they still they can hold them up. Do this here. Yeah, this is actually gonna come down to it. Ooh. They do get it smited down so close. And the Baron is picked up by the Unicorns. No casualties sustained. Yeah, and they didn't actually even need to clear these wards around the Baron because Nuke Dog showed himself in uh -oh, the bottom lane. Gets, whoa, okay. Yeah, that's, that's okay. Hillisang's there. And he is actually able to dodge out the hook. Ace in the hole comes out to make Vander a little bit lower. Rocket now retreating once again. And they're just going to start shoving down mid season in Baron Empowered Minions. Yeah, a few deep wards and then Nuklek showing, showing himself in the bottom lane. And then Unicorns went straight for that Baron here. Ignore the pink wards, or sorry, the green wards around it. Didn't matter. They are looking good. 25 minutes. Inhibits are down. Baron picked up all the dragons. 10,000 gold lead. I like that they kind of have this fusionist style the unicorns do. They're able to play methodically when they want to, but when you least expect it, they're going to throw something crazy and like, oh, you just tried a Baron? Okay, now we're going to try the Baron. And now they're going to be able to push on, but Visit Chachi is caught. He's causing some chaos of his own. In the back, the tower's down. He's going to go down, and they'll trade the objective and back away from the remainder of the right of the arcane. Yeah, another then able to open here for the unicorns. Go back, use all the gold they've picked up. Like 2,600 gold on Vardax, 1,600 on Kikis. I mean, there's a lot of gold being picked up here. Some key items coming in and go straight back down to that inhibitor. Get that one. And then suddenly, let's see what minutes do the work while you take the last out of turret in the top lane. This should not be difficult for the Unicorn to do and basically take that win, not allowing Rocket to do anything. Well, you mentioned they tend to win these snowball fashions when they can just trample down opponents. Rocket has almost never been in a hole this big, and this is really troubling for them. We talked a lot about how a lot of teams consider them to be one of the best and one of the most underrated teams in Europe. Right now, the Unicorns are really proving that assertion otherwise. Again, they're showing the same early dominance we have seen before from them. When they're, every time they pick up wins, except for the Fnatic games, it's through them winning the laning phase and just keep applying pressure onto the enemy team, never allowing them to just sit and farm. And they've been doing it again, because every single lane was winning. And especially with Vardex getting that early kill and Power Weaver getting the early kills, it's just gone so wrong for Rocket. Yeah, Power of Evil is just getting so, so scary. Kick is still staying relevant in the back, just throwing spears as best he can. And also, worth mentioning here, Bardex has got a pretty darn good scoreline for himself. We're getting to that point in the game where Caitlyn's starting to come a lot more useful once again. Tower, or rather inhibitor, at half health, and they're still protecting the big minion. Meanwhile, Vizichachi going to do a little split pushing of his own. Can Rocket defend this inhib? It's going to be tough. Keep in mind as well, Rocket, their engage is very easy to spot for Unicorns of Love. Oh, it's just a Cyan trying to run in. So they won't be able to start any fights. No real hard engage on the side of Rocket either. They're living in this base right now. There's no one that can defend against Visit Chachi. It's going to take him a while to poke this down, but he's got some minions at his back. And the rest of the team is going to show up here as well. Unicorns of Love just taking everything away from Rocket, not letting them out of their base. They grab another turret here. It's 28 minutes in. And this is looking so dire for Team Rocket. Yeah, again, push into this turret here, wait for the super minions to do some work in the mid lane. We see they're already close to that Nexus turret. And then take down the tower as soon as Rocket has moved away. They can't get in position in time. The tower is at half health. They're going to be able to push off in the mini waves for just a moment. But there will be one in another minute or two. Power of Evil, Bardag's in the front line, unafraid of this Rocket squad. And meanwhile, Vizichachi just went ahead and switched positions. He's down on the bottom side. He's poking <laughs> away. They're getting super minions on the way. 
I mean, this is just going so well right now for the Unicorns. Yeah, no reason to back away. Stay till this tower is gone. Heal Vardux, let him get a few hits on the tower every single time, then it will go down. Yep. Power of Evil are going to tank a little bit up. There's still some super minions on the bottom side. The tower goes down. There we go, Flesh and Form. Vincent Shachi is going to manage to grab himself a Woe Light kill. They're chasing Rocket all the way back to their fountain. They've got nowhere to go here. 29 and a half minutes. They grab themselves the last inhibitor. They can just keep pushing in as slowly as they please. There is nothing Rocket can do to stop them. Nothing at all, and really, really good performance. Might try and get a few kills. Yeah, Power of Evil, Evil does take a few shots on the right of the Arcane. Even if they back out here and take a moment and just come right back, there's three inhibitors down. There's a dragon that's easily the Unicorns. They can even take their time about this because there's still yep. going to be a few minutes before that even that first inhibitor comes back up. And again, just like last time when they, when they went back to base, there was like 1,600 plus gold on every member. Look at that here. More items incoming for the Unicorns of Love. They should not be afraid. They aren't, obviously, probably the easiest statement in the world. But I do think Unicorns are going to win. Yeah, and they definitely have shown some impressive games when they've won in the European LCS. But this is just a massive lead for them. 10 towers to three, 15,000 gold ahead of their opponents. And Rocket, they're not a bad team. They've just gotten so far out-rotated so beat down in the mid-game that they were supposed to be strong. The They've not phase. played in the laning phase. Their win conditions, they just did not fit. And as a result, the Unicorns have stampeded all over them. Basically, yeah. It's all about that early laning phase. Going so heavily in favor of the Unicorns. And then again, them not sitting back, trying to play passive. Really showing how both the, actually the Unicorns and H2K have showed today a great ability to close out games. And no longer the passive EU style we had last year. Oh, there's only one way once you have a lead, and that's forward. Keep pushing it, keep forcing fights, forcing objectives. Unicorns is this team. They're the ones that do challenge the meta, that do push it forward. And right now, pushing forward into the base, the inhibitor will fall once again in the middle. Not much Rockat can do. They back themselves into a corner. Ben backed into a corner, I should say. Vander going to intercept the ace in the hole. But there's only one Nexus Tower remaining, and it doesn't look like it's going to be there for much longer. Unicorns of Love chasing them all away. Well, I just trying to stay alive, and he <laughs> just gets popped down. Not even going to try for the Akathian surprise. That's going to be it. 31 and a half minutes in. GG as the Unicorns of Love put another W on the board. Fantastic win by the Unicorns of Love here. Very happy all around, of course. Well done there. And cheers all around. They've earned it. Methodical victory. Big plays for them. And there really wasn't anything that Rocket could do in that situation. They, they, I don't want to say they lost in picks and bans, but they just didn't execute what they had planned. I think they picked a comp which was fairly difficult for them to play, especially again if they didn't do well in the laning phase. Because the Cyan pick into the Maokai, we keep talking about how tricky that can be late game where Maokai is going to be a lot more useful compared to the Cyan. And then obviously again with Power of Evil and Vardux on these two great late game characters. Not saying that Rocket weren't strong in the late game. I mean, Nuke Dog and Woolite would have been able to do well, they didn't really a fantastic job. Get but yeah, that's the, basically the point. Standard lanes, because it went so heavily in favor of the Unicorns, there's just no way for them to ever get to that late game point and be like even or close to it. You had three items completed on the Caitlyn at 30 minutes. You had obviously three items completed on the Cassiopeia as well. Like they got so fast to that three item spike on their carries from the Unicorns. They could just roll over Rocket. Again, the one-on-one -on -one kills, Nuke Dog getting outplayed in lane against Power of Evil, dodging the stun, killing him. Easy peasy. Yeah, and I was really excited at the beginning to see